Good evening. I'm Erin Burnett. Out front tonight, Cohen heads to the Capitol. The president's former fixer in Washington today. It was a surprise visit that lasted several hours. Cohen was trying to avoid being seen. He tried to use a freight elevator to move between floors. Today's visit, though, comes just days before his return to testify on Capitol Hill and seen he was. Mr. Cohen, your attorney told us that you were now meeting with the Senate Intelligence Committee today. Is that true? Didn't want to answer the question. Here's the thing. Cohen is about to testify for three straight days, and one of them will be in public for all of us to see. It is a huge surprise for President Trump, who probably thought he was in the clear after Cohen backed out of his testimony earlier this month. But now, Cohen is going to have three days to tell all, two uh, behind closed doors, one in public. And what's he going to tell about Trump? Well, one source close to Cohen told The Wall Street Journal, quote, he's going to say things that will give you chills. And those things are about the president of the United States. They are exactly the topics Trump is most afraid of, money, his business, and his family. Now, President Trump's put a good face on this, right? Remember about Michael Cohen when he said, I have nothing to fear? Michael Cohen, he's agreed to testify uh, before the House Democrats uh, next month. What do you think of that? Are you worried about it? And I'm not worried about it at all, no. But he is, and he should be. Twelve years together, countless deals, payments to porn star and a playmate before the election, that possible tower in Moscow, and, and that may be the tip of the iceberg. The fact is, Michael Cohen knows a lot about Donald Trump. He knows the truth. I know the truth. Others know the truth. And here is the truth. The people of the United States of America, the people of the world, don't believe what he's saying. The man doesn't tell the truth. And it's sad that I should take responsibility for his dirty deeds. Trump's dirty deeds. Well, Trump wouldn't want any of those public if they happened. Cohen says Trump was threatening his family in order to keep him t testifying, in fact. Threats like this one. He should give information maybe on his father-in-law because that's the one that people want to look at because where does that money, that's the money in the family. It's comments like that one that forced the House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to warn the president last night when Cohen's testimony was announced that, quote, any efforts to intimidate family members or pressure witnesses will not be tolerated. Evan Perez is out front live in Washington. And Evan, uh, you know, it was a surprise to see Michael Cohen yeah. on Capitol Hill today, rather unprecedented ahead of his testimony. What was he doing there? Well, he spent much of the day, Aaron, behind closed doors in the secure rooms there in the Senate. And this is the room, these are the rooms where they keep classified information and people can go in and read these documents. They cannot take them out. Uh, one thing that he may have been doing is reviewing uh, his previous testimony uh, to make sure that when he testifies next week, it all lines up. Obviously, uh, this is an issue for Michael Cohen. After all, he has pleaded guilty to lying to this, to this very same panel uh, back in 2017. And, and look, Look, I mean, I think what we're looking forward to not only to that testimony, which he'll, he'll be back before the Senate committee uh, in on Tuesday. Uh, he's also got uh, the public testimony, which you made, made a mention of on Wednesday, which is before the House uh, Oversight Committee. And that's the committee that has already put out a list of items that they have uh, that they believe that Cohen uh, will be able to address during uh, what we expect to be hours and hours of testimony. By the way, that's exactly at the time that the president is going to be overseas in Vietnam doing his summit meeting with the North Koreans. And among the, the things that the, uh, set, the House committee says that they're going to be discussing with him uh, are uh, 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 public efforts by the president and his attorney to, uh, to, uh, to uh, intimidate Mr. Cohen. Uh, they also said potentially fraudulent and inappropriate practices by the Trump Foundation. Of course, this is very close to the president and his family. And of course, the president's compliance with campaign finance laws, which goes to those payments to the women, which is what uh, started all of these problems for, the, for Michael Cohen and, of course, the president. So, of course, uh, Wednesday is going to be the big day because it's all going to be in public. Uh, the Tuesday testimony is going to be behind closed doors. We expect that the senators are actually going to participate in that questioning, which is unusual. Usual, Aaron. All right. Thank you very much, Evan. And I want to go now to someone who's going to be in the room asking questions on that public testimony for all of us to see. Democratic Congressman Harley Ruta of California, member of the House Oversight Committee. And Congressman, I appreciate your time. So you heard Evan, right? We understand Cohen was with his attorneys on Capitol Hill today. Do you know why they needed to be, be there and in that room where, where you go to see classified information? 
I would imagine based on the fact he's going to have several days of testimony, as you mentioned, some behind closed doors, that they're laying at down some of the ground rules, some of the expectations, and some of what uh, we might expect to hear from his testimony. Um, you know, as, as we were, were saying, you know, he obviously his being there today suggests that perhaps he needed to review documents that he could only view there, right, in that classified room. That could be anything, of course, but that would include transcripts from his prior appearance. Um, do you think that's possible, that they were doing that or concerned about possible perjury, looking at old transcripts, or it's unclear? I think it's a combination of all of the above. We want to make sure that Michael Cohen is prepared for his testimony. Mm -hmm. And while we are uh, thrilled that he's contrite, he's contrite because he got caught. And we have some tough questions for him. We need to understand uh, what's going on in the Trump administration as well as the Trump organization regarding multiple areas, whether it's campaign finance laws, whether it's paying off uh, individuals with hush money, uh, what's going on in the hotel, the number of Russians who have paid cash for condos uh, across the world and his projects. We have a lot of questions. We want a lot of answers. So Cohen has reportedly said that what we're all going to hear in this public testimony in that room where you'll be, uh, it, it, what he's going to do is, is, quote, give you chills. That's how we're going to feel when we learn what Michael Cohen has to say about Donald Trump. Do you think that'll be the case? I definitely think there's a possibility of it. And you couple that with Mueller's report hopefully coming out in the very near future. The amount of uh, breadth and depth of that investigation and the testimony that Michael Cohen will be providing, uh, I think there is a possibility that, yes, we're going to see uh, some activity and behavior that's clearly unbecoming of the president of the United States of America. Do you think we'll learn anything that could threaten the presidency? Let's see what the evidence says. I think more importantly than that, I am hopeful that my colleagues, both in the Democratic caucus and the Republican caucus, stand up to our constitutional obligations under Article I. And if there is actionable items against this president, that we hold him accountable for his conduct. Now, Congressman, we, you mentioned Mueller's uh, investigation, right? We're expecting it to be formally done any day, right? I mean, it could even be tomorrow. You know, so when you say uh, the report, how, how soon do you think we'll see a report? Sounds like you believe we will see one, that it won't be a fight, uh, after Mueller announces it's done. Well, we have this continuing question as to uh, what the attorney general is going to release or not release. I am hopeful that the entire report, subject to national security implications as determined by Congress, is released to the public for our full review. Uh, that's democracy. That's what the citizens of the United States deserve. And I'm, I'm very hopeful that the attorney general will do his job in this area. You know, some say there's going to be enough in there to warrant impeachment proceedings, even if there's nothing that even if there's nothing criminally indictable. Right. But that there would be enough to warrant impeachment, which is a political process. Do you think that's likely? Is that what you expect? Well, I think many would say there's enough offenses right now or evidence of offenses that we have impeachable uh, information right now. But I think in any qualified prosecution, you want to get through uh, the full investigative analysis. And that is what Mueller's report does. There's no reason to take action until you have all of the facts. That report will provide us with a, a clear understanding of all of the facts. And then whatever action needs to be taken will be taken. Congressman Ruta, thanks for your time. Thank you.